before we go to our next guest, I want to give you a couple of program notes. Tomorrow, we have something that's been very popular every month. We uh, take your questions that have been called in, and we try to give some answers to all these questions that come from our audience. And it's a fun show. It's fun for me, and I think Wendy will be here with me, and, and we enjoy it very much. And so you, you don't want to miss that. That's a lot of fun. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention is I was thinking today, why are we reliving the Civil War? I mean, let's face it. I mean, it's over. The Confederacy is over. I mean, what's this big deal? And I also, there are a million people every year that are trafficked into slavery. And you talk about slavery, it is just horrible. These people are put into bondage that is beyond degradation. It is so horrible. A million a year, young people, young men and women, into slavery, and that goes on year after year. And why in the midst of that aren't we concerned about that instead of this other? So I asked my our producer, I said, tell me, what's the deal? Why are we tearing down all these monuments and, uh, and reliving the Civil War? Well, when there are a million people in actual slavery right now every year in the world. And he said, well, I'm going to look into it. So what they're finding is this organization that was formed with the name Black Lives Matter, uh, maybe, maybe the people who founded that weren't quite as pure in heart as you would like. And so you're going to have these demonstrations in Seattle that they're trying to break up the, you know, special zone. And you've got all these riots, and you're tearing down all the statues. But well, what's behind it? What is at the core of it? This is going to be a remarkable program we're going to have on Thursday. You don't want to miss it. So tomorrow, answering questions Thursday, intriguing, inter uh, uh, intrigue, intriguing intrigue that uh, uh, shows you the origin of this rather m strange movement that's taking over the society. Oh, well, that will be fascinating. It'll be fascinating. You don't want to miss it. Okay. Well, there have been more than 2 million cases of the coronavirus in America, and health officials are warning about a second wave. So how can we protect ourselves from this invisible enemy? A good friend, Dr. Chauncey Crandall, has the answers. Best-selling author Dr. Chauncey Crandall is a world-renowned cardiologist. His combination of faith and medicine to cure those in need has inspired millions. During the COVID-19 pandemic, he's been educating people about the virus, encouraging them to take precautions, but not to live in fear. In his latest book, Fight Back, Dr. Crandall offers proven strategies for staying healthy and safe during the coronavirus health crisis. Well, my dear friend Chauncey Crandall is with us today via Skype. Chauncey, God bless you. It's good to see you. Thank you. Blessings in the name of Jesus, Pat. We love you, and I miss you very much. You too. Well, I'm looking forward to you and your wife coming together sooner or later one of our meetings. Well, listen, Chauncey, tell me about this coronavirus. What is so unusual about it, and why is it spreading so fast? Well, Pat, you know, this is a new virus. It's new to human beings. Now, did China uh, develop it, or did it come from a bat from China? I don't think uh, we're clear on that. But this is a very toxic, uh, lethal virus that is structured in such a way, Pat, uh, that it causes damage. And the reason it causes such damage is that we, as human beings, have never seen this virus before. Our body does not have immunity against it. We don't know how to fight it, and therefore this virus is quite aggressive. But the good news today, Pat, is that there are reports coming out that there are mutations within this virus that are weakening it, and it's not as toxic as it used to be early on. So that is good news at this point. You talk about in your book something called metabolic syndrome, that these people who are vulnerable to it have. Well, why are people, some people more vulnerable than others? Well, what is this metabolic syndrome? 
Well, the metabolic syndrome are those people that have disorders of sugar. Uh, diabetics are, are clearly in that uh, uh, category. But we know that people with metabolic syndrome, diabetics, blood sugar disorder, uh, people that are immunocompromised, uh, cancer patients, uh, those that are in dialysis units, even the elderly that are in nursing homes, their immune system is compromised and they cannot mount an attack on the virus to win. And these people need to be protected. So if you're a diabetic, you need to lose weight. If you're overweight, you need to lose weight. And these things will help us to build our body up to strengthen it so we can win this battle against this virus. Well, your book is called Fight Back. And so how do we fight back? Metabolic syndrome or just the average human being? How do we protect ourselves from this COVID? Well, the, the main thing is to get healthier and stronger, Pat. You're an advocate of this. You talk about it all the time and, and it's quite encouraging. But the uh, some of the simple things that we can do is uh, we can exercise every day, but not to the point of fatigue, which can wear the body down, but get, get in some form of exercise. We know the immune system is stronger in those people that exercise correctly. We need to get enough sleep so we're not burdened down daily with uh, all those problems of sleepless nights. We need to lower our stress and we need to eat correctly, Pat. And these are all things that you have advocated for good health. And when you have good health, you are much stronger when you go into the battle against this virus. Well, you've got a whole section here about some things that people should, uh, should eat and uh, wear gloves and masks and so forth. Tell me, well, here's something that just I opened up, selenium and uh, uh, probiotics and, and magnesium. Tell us about all those things. Well, the, the reason that these are in there, because all these um, um, uh, have shown benefit to increase the immune system. Now, Pat, the thing is with this virus, it's a round particle and it has spikes on it that are sticky. And that's why this is so... Uh, pathogenic is because these, these uh, viral spikes attached to endothelium, the lining of the nose, the mouth, the throat, the lungs, and these are the points of entry where this virus comes in. So building yourself up with strong immunity and going on things like vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin A, zinc, selenium, garlic, probiotics, all these things ha um, help the immune system at the entry point, mucous membranes, et cetera, to become stronger so we develop a shield and that virus cannot penetrate that shield, Pat. Well, what about masks? Are, are masks important in hand washing and all this? Well, masks are important, but they're not important for you. They're important for uh, uh, people that have the virus that can spread it. Like I have one case now uh, an older woman, I had to put her in the hospital with the virus, but her husband is at home and he's sick and he's still going out in the community without a mask. He is, uh, he's infecting other people. He needed to stay home for 14 days, but he's alone, he's an older man. And uh, so we're counseling him on that. And in fact, he got so sick, we had to put him in the hospital. Well, you know, I, I, I read about these uh, these respirator things that were so important, but apparently a large number of people die when they go off a respirator. Well, I understand the Brits have got some uh, um, right. medicine that may, may help that. Well, you're, you're right about that. When you go on a ventilator or a respirator, as you state, there are other things that are involved with that when you go on it. You have to have a feeding tube put in. You have to have all these central IVs. So there are all these additional ports of entry, uh, potential complications that can happen when you're on a ventilator. But we do know, Pat, now that we can prevent people from going on a ventilator. We've learned about this virus that even though your oxygen level might be dropping, if we put you on high flow nasal oxygen, that we can uh, uh, sustain you without putting you on the ventilator. So less people are going on the ventilator now, which is a good thing. And the pathologic toxicity of this virus seems to be less, and we're getting a break because this virus has mutated 
in a favorable direction for human beings. Well, are there any foods that people should avoid uh, in this time? Well, foods, you know, uh, yes, you don't want to eat junk, and you're an advocate for that. You don't want to drink beer all day. That's not good. But, you know, of course, smoking isn't, is hel isn't helpful at all, so stop that. Anything with sugar in it, uh, we know, uh, compromises the immune system, so you want to stay away from sugary drinks and, and, and crazy desserts and things like that. But everything back that you have always advocated on this program are things that will benefit you to beat this virus. And, you know, you should be writing this book because you know everything about <laughs> getting in good health. I, you know, Chauncey, I'm 90. I worked out yesterday. I feel so good, and it's just amazing. I, I feel I'm almost ashamed of myself. I feel so good. <laughs> Your book, by the way, is called Fight Back. And uh, where can people get it? Well, you can get this on Amazon. You can get it in Barnes & Noble, any bookstore, Walmart. It's out there. I'm sure it's going to be a bestseller because the information in this book, Pat, mm -hmm. is put together in a simple way. And the problem with the news media, we are getting false information from multiple angles. And it's very difficult for just a lay person to understand what they are fighting against. And this book, Pat, will give you victory over this virus, and you will live in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I receive that. Ladies and gentlemen, fight back. And Dr. Crandall, dear friend, and I look forward to us not having to socially distance and you. We can see you again. And my yeah. best wishes to your lovely wife, Deborah. And God bless you, Chauncey. And I hope this book, Fight Back, ladies and gentlemen, Chauncey right. Crandall, M.D., you, you want to get a copy of it. It's available wherever books are sold. Thanks again, Pat, my dear I friend. Tell you, Pat, I want to tell you, I read your book on the Holy Spirit. It moved me uh, to such extremes. I cannot tell you, you know, I, I love this book written by you, an older man that has experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. I've grown in my spirit because of your book, so I want to plug your book on the Holy Spirit. I hope you. I'm glad to hear that because you know the Lord gave me that. I, mean, I don't know if the Lord gave you all the stuff in this book, but He sure gave me that one, and it was a revelation I'd never had in my life. So thank you, Chauncey. You're welcome. We love you and we miss you. You too, my brother. God bless you. He read my book. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you read his. <laughs> I read his cover to cover. It's a terrific book. And my book on the Holy Spirit is, we haven't yet determined when it's going to be released, but uh, the Lord gave it to me. And every morning I'd wake up and I'd say, God, what do you have for me today? And he'd show me a particular part of the scripture. I remember you saying that you were actually surprised by some of the revelation, things that you hadn't thought of before never, or read before, known before? Never in my life I began to understand the whole idea of the Trinity, of the person and work of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it, it was it was ground, groundbreaking. And the things just sitting there because of all this corona stuff, and I, I need my publisher to get with me. I could self-publish, but I don't want to do that. And so... Well, that's uh, timing is always perfect. It's going to come out at just the right time. I, Thank you. <laughs> All right, we were yep. <laughs> Anyhow, this book, Chauncey Cran will fight back. You don't want to get a copy. He's a terrific guy. He, really he was is. head of uh, cardiology at Palm Beach General, and now he's doing something else. But uh, he, he's had people raised from the dead. I mean, he literally had, had a dead man he prayed for, and the Lord brought him back to life again. He's got some amazing stories and knowledge, great knowledge for oh, those yeah, of us he, who want to be Oh, yeah, he's an extremely good guy.